Wait, are you ready? Alex? Yes. Yes, sir? Yes, sir. Are you on? Yep. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, I want to uh, welcome you tonight to prayer. Amen. Yeah. Thank you guys for coming out tonight. Amen. Because it's a awesome thing to come and seek the Lord and, and to pray. Uh, and um, I know that a lot of a lot of people, well, not a lot of people, but there's people out there I know who are watching by YouTube. Uh, our services and stuff, and I'd like to bring you into our prayer meeting tonight so you can kind of see uh, an idea of what we do here on Mondays and Fridays. And, and uh, we're going to be showing a video tonight, which I think is so important for you as a viewer tonight, that uh, talks about this end time prophecy of a man called uh, Steve Hill. And uh, it's a vision that God gave him. And you'll see the vision, you'll hear his story. How uh, Steve Hill, powerful evangelist, and all this, and then all of a sudden he got hit with uh, some kind of disease, and he was on his deathbed, literally on his deathbed, and and he asked God for a second chance. He said, God, if you continue on, he said, I'm gonna preach, man. I'm gonna be on fire for Jesus, and and God raised him out of his deathbed, and after that, you'll hear his story of how God gave him a vision. You know what I mean? And the vision's gonna trip you out because it's kind of like what you hear in the prayer, uh, what you hear. Uh, throughout the nation, even on, on major networks and people, uh, pastors who are preaching this kind of doctrine to where, you know what I mean, every... Uh -oh. where, where everybody... Is... Hallelujah! I said hallelujah! Hallelujah! Come on, Pastor Nick, run! We're, we're in the midst of a windstorm here, so we may go in and out, but uh, uh, nevertheless, uh, uh, Steve Hill, or there's many out preaching doctrines today that, you know I mean, it's okay for you to live, the, live your life, as long as you've accepted Christ, you can kind of live however you want, you know what I mean, you can drink, you can smoke, you can have affairs, you can live with people, you can do all this stuff, you can lie, cheat, you can do all this, and it really doesn't matter as long as you're saved. And uh, that's a big doctrine that's going out right now, and you're going to hear tonight, uh, 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 hopefully we can hear it tonight, the, the, the vision of, of Stephen Hill, amen. Um, and so, so anyway, uh, before this electricity goes out and we don't get what we want to get tonight, uh, we're going to go ahead and watch this video tonight. Um, so I need help here. Somebody turn the TV on. Uh, uh, and and uh, we're going to show you this video tonight of Steve Hill. Virtual um, dimension. A world beyond. So go ahead and we get know. in on that. Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Dreams contain messages from heaven. Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. My guest, Steve Hill, is so hungry for God. He went to the various moves of God throughout the world, and he received the same thing these great men and women of God had. And he went to a church, a single church in Pensacola, Florida, and from all over the world, because the word got out, the power of God was there, four million people came to that one single church. Well. The devil tried to knock him out. He was on his deathbed. He was preparing uh, the, the funeral arrangements. And a great miracle happened. And he also was given at that time a vision. It was like he could see it happening. And it is what is about ready to happen to planet Earth that he literally feels everyone must understand this vision. Hello. You know, I'm here with 
Steve Hill, and I, I'm looking at almost like his rap sheet. I mean, at, at age 10, his dad starts him drinking beer, alcohol. Uh, by 12, 13, he's, he's into hard drugs, uh, injecting drugs into his veins. He rested 13 times. You know, when I, when I read about myself, I can't believe that that was me. You must feel the same way about yourself. That, that's not even you. It's a miracle that all of us are alive. Yeah. Okay, that we made it through it. But, you know, one of my favorite things to do uh, when I'm in my hometown area, when I would witness to, like, young men and women that are involved in drugs and alcohol, I would take them, of course, if it was a girl, I'd take it with somebody else, to the graves of my dead friends. Usage of heroin. And this guy right here. And I would talk to him about Carlos. I'd talk to him about Billy. And I'd say, Billy was 19, man. You'll meet a similar fate if you do the same by using those drugs. And I would witness because no one ever believes that it's going to happen to them. No one believes they're ever going to die. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But he's patient. He'll take you on a journey. If he can finally get you there and drop you into hell, that's his final goal. And that's the goal he had for my life. He had a total transformation. Uh, and as a result, he had, first of all, there was a key that I noticed. You were mentored by some of the best men of God. Uh, David, David Wilkerson, David, Leonard Raven. David Wilkerson, uh, Leonard Ravenhill are two of the men. My, to, to me, they're my spiritual fathers. And people ask me, you know, they say, why are you, why are you the way you are? Well, we're all, we're all products of who we've been hanging around. And that's why I say, pick your friends carefully, okay? And, and David Wilkerson put me through Bible school, met Leonard Ravenhill, Nikki Cruz uh, taught us on evangelism. So I was raised around, and of course, Ravenhill was friends with Smith Wigglesworth and A.W. So Tudor. it goes on and on. Oh, the, it, it, it's all connected. But... What uh, another thing I noticed about you? You were hungry for God. Wherever he heard there was a move of God, he was there. I mean, a lot of people say, "Well, if God wants to do something to me, uh, he'll come to me." Well, he can and will. But I'm so hungry for God. If I hear he's somewhere, I'm out there. I, and that's the way Steve was. See, that's so. It's so non-biblical for people to say if God's going to move. He's got to come to me. Who do we think we are to say to God that he, He's already come? He doesn't. He's already come down, okay? And He set it up on on we we celebrate Christmas Day. He set up the whole pattern. The baby Jesus was there. The shepherds had to come to Him. Later on, the wise men had to come to Him. And I always tell people, God gave the first altar call. He sets it up to where we got to go to Him. And so, I have pursued the Lord okay. all my life. Let's take you to Argentina, the revival. You went there. They've been in revival more years than I can even remember. But tell me, when you saw Carlos on the Condi. Well, we lived there for seven years during the peak of the Argentine revival. And it's still moving on. God's still moving. We saw churches go from 500 to 20,000. Mm. Just amazing. Started, my wife and I planted 13 churches, built an orphanage. But Carlos Anaconda, when I got around him, and los que hablan español, también hablo español, and those that speak Spanish, I speak Spanish fluent. My wife and I lived there seven years. But Carlos was this insane. And if you're watching Carlos, I'm, that's a respectful word for you, okay? Just, <laughs> he was insane for the things of God. And he's a man that owns a nuts and bolts factory. And so anyone that feels like you're common, okay, look at this man. And I went to one of his crusades in a nutshell, brother, because we could talk all day about this man. Went to his crusade, 20, 30,000 people out in an open field. Bunch of light bulbs hanging, just naked light bulbs hanging everywhere. No big fanfare, just this man that had authority. He had authority over darkness. And I would watch him in front of tens of thousands of people. And he would go, in el nombre de Jesus Cristo de Nazareth, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Teato Satanas, I bind you Satan. And as far as the eye could see, people were hit by the power and thrown to the ground. People that were walking down the 
sidewalks, not even paying attention to him, would be thrown to the ground, start shaking under the power. And I saw this and I went, Jesus, whatever this man has, Jesus, Peter's shadow healed the sick. And this is the closest thing I've ever seen to that. I want what he has. And you better get hungry, my friend. If you want to be used of God, you've got to have a hunger. You've got to have a craving for that. And I got that. Steve went to these various moves of God. I was hungry. I was overwhelmed with what I saw. Uh, obviously, a lot of other people worldwide were overwhelmed. Four million people went to that little church in Pensacola, Florida, because the power of God was there. Tell me about that girl that had cancer. We had a, you know, and there's so many stories, and, and uh, you know, I, I, I want to talk about this vision that God has just given me because many, you know, you're looking for these peaks in your life. The peak in your life is in front of you, not behind you. Okay, there's more to God than what you have. But the Brownsville Revival, we saw millions of people come through. I preached there for five years, saw four million people come through, but they would come in jets, they would come in private jets, they'd come on trains, they'd hitchhike. They came from all over because we have the news, the CNN and all these guys covered it. And so they brought the lost in. But this one little girl, 15 years old, came in. She couldn't have weighed 80 pounds, had a little baseball cap on, dying of cancer. Long story in a nutshell. We did something we never did. We brought her on the platform, okay, thousands of people there that night. And I just felt of the Lord that we needed to lay hands on her. She was going to die. She was sent there as a last request. She wanted to go to Brownsville, not Disney. She didn't want to go anywhere else but the, the Brownsville Revival. Laid hands on her two weeks later. This was before Internet and all this kind of stuff. I mean, Internet was out, but it wasn't just every Facebook and all. Her father sends us a letter. Just did the PET scans. Just did all the scans. All the cancer's gone. And now, years later, we just contacted her. And she's graduated from university. She's doing fantastic. All the cancer is gone. Now remember, she was given up for dead. And so we've just seen so many miracles. I believe, that's why I love your program. It's supernatural. If you don't believe in the supernatural, you don't believe in Jesus. I want to I say like that, that again. If you, like you that? don't believe in the supernatural, you don't believe in Jesus. Now, you see why the devil tried to take him out. And let me tell you, something happened. To him. I, I observed him before he developed cancer. And it, it, was, it was terminal. There was no chance of him surviving. He was preparing for his funeral, making arrangements with his wife. He is literally on his deathbed. And he cries out to Jesus. And he says, Jesus, if you want to take me, take me. But I, if you leave me here and give me my strength back, I will win a million souls for you. And guess what? God answered his prayer. God gave him a vision for the last days. You better listen to this. I recently had a supernatural visitation from the Lord. I am under mandate to share with everyone. It's, it's tearing me up even as we talk right now because of God, I was in heaven devotions and I was sitting on my couch. I could take you to the exact place. I was sitting on my couch and the Lord, it was early in the morning, no one else was awake in the house. And I, I closed my eyes and I began to see this color vision come down. It just, a, a vision is just a supernatural experience from God. And, and he began to download this in my spirit. And I saw this resort, an incredible the ski resort. And I opened my eyes because it was so real, Sid. And I opened my eyes and it disappeared. So I closed them again and I began to shake because it was like watching a movie. And I looked up and I saw above the ski resort, I saw this mountain of snow. Now I'm a skier and I, I saw this mountain of snow, but it was piled up. It was more than what we needed to ski. And the Lord began to speak to me about the end times, that this mountain of snow is all the fall.
false teaching that is falling on the church right now. And if we don't do something about it, if we don't destroy these layers and layers and layers of snow, then it's going to come crashing down on innocent Christians. And in this vision, the, the resort was the church. These were people that just came, you know, they came, they paid to be at the resort. We, we give tithes to be at church. Innocent people are going to die if we don't do something about this. I can't believe it's happening in my lifetime. My daughter, who was in Bible school, one of the teachers stood up and said to the students, said that once you're a Christian, you are free to do anything you want. You can do anything you want. You're free to sin. You're free to... And so my daughter's sitting out there and he's saying you're free to jump in bed with your boyfriend. You're free to drink. You're free to do anything you want because the blood covers it all. And then... And that's just... And then the deification of man. That is the worship of man. Look at this world today. You were putting on pedestals all these ministers and all these politicians. It's the setup for the Antichrist because in the last days we are going to worship man and we're going to look to him for all the answers. I'm going to tell you right now, Sid, you see it. I see it. It's clear as day. I can't believe other people cannot see what's going on in the world. But we got to get back. And what is that? And that is... Is what we've got to do with this avalanche, the spiritual avalanche that could kill millions. We are responsible as leaders, as generals, to destroy. And what I saw in the vision, I saw helicopters. anti-tank weapons blowing up these mountains and it was as clear as watching a television program snow was crumbling down it was under control because these generals were blowing it up themselves before it blew up and came down and killed people I got on the phone soaked already with tears my phone was sticky and I talked to the Colorado Ski Patrol and I shared with them my vision and they said everything you saw Mr. Hill is exactly what we do you saw the Ski Patrol in action we're trying to save their lives and he said I personally man an anti-tank weapon and my shells shoot five miles seven eight kilometers into the mountains to blow them up and I'm listening and this just happened okay this is not five ten twenty years ago then he said this, and I close. He lifted his voice like an evangelist. And he said, can I say something to you, Mr. Hill? And I said, yes, sir. And his voice began to crack like mine is cracking. He said, do you want to know why they die? And I said, yes, why do they die? He said, because they don't listen to me. They refuse to listen. He said, they refuse to listen to me. I tell them, don't go up to that mountain. But they go anyway. They go on their ski their snowmobiles. They go on their helicopters. And he said, they're dropped off onto the mountain. And he, did, he said, an hour later, I'm digging their corpse out of the snow. And I told him, I said, thank you very much. And I said, I do the same thing. I spend my life trying to save lives. And I bought an avalanche probe, which is a long, 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 long pole that you drive into the snow 
It's the most wicked device I've ever owned in my life. It's to find dead bodies. It's to find dead bodies. And hopefully maybe find one that's got just an ounce of breath left. A backslider, spiritually speaking. A prodigal, spiritually speaking. But someone who's been covered by all this false teaching. And many of you that are watching this, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know what you're doing is wrong. You know what you're listening to is wrong. It's feel-good teaching. I am warning you right now, if you are in a church that is allowing you to be free to do anything you want, run for your life. If you're not in a church that is preaching the whole gospel, all the words in red, run for your life. If you've fallen away from the traditional teachings of your Christian life, get back. Amen. Get back to what you used to believe in when you were first a child of God. I've been very burdened over this. I didn't have a vision. But many godly men and women are burdened over the, the, I'll call it what it is, what Steve did. It's false teaching that is flooding the airways, flooding Christianity. But I'm going to tell you something else. I'm going to turn Steve loose to pray for the same power that was on Jesus, that rose Messiah Jesus from the dead, that rests on him, that's about ready to rest on you. Don't go away. It's supernatural. Call now and get Steve Hill's spot. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's, uh, I don't know if you remember the other night when Pastor Ray was telling us about the, the video that they watched. This was the one. And, uh, you know, it, it's a trip anymore, you know what I mean? Because we're living in the end days, in the end times, you know, uh, uh, Second Timothy. Uh, chapter 3 says that in the last days, he said, demonic times will come. He said people will be uh, lovers of themselves, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God. Boastful, proud, disobedient to their parents, uh, you know, haters of the good and, and uh, ungodly, you know, and all these things that, that the end time, and he wasn't talking about them out there, he was talking about the church. You know what I mean? That they would give themselves, you know, uh, and listen to you know, to, to, or, or to live however they wanted to live, you know what I mean, and you heard it tonight, you know what I mean, that, that you can't do that, right. you have to live according to the word of God, right. you know what I mean, you, 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 I mean, what did Jesus save you from, right. you know what I mean, uh, uh, you know, and, and then why would you want him to, to go ahead and save you, and then you go right back into your sin again, right. That's not why he saved you. You know what I mean? He saved you to bring you out of the power. Because see, the power that we're wrestling against is not flesh and blood. Understand that tonight. It is not flesh and blood. It's not the people. And it's not, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, you know what I mean? When you're, when you're dealing with a disobedient child or, or a rebellious teenager or, 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 or even a, 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 you know what I mean? Just a, a terco, a, a stubborn uh, husband or wife. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, or a rowdy neighbor. You know what I mean? You're not dealing with humans. Right. You're dealing with the, with the evil spirits that are out there influencing their lives. Right. You with me? And we're not fighting flesh and blood. We're fighting principalities and we're fighting powers. We're fi fighting the rulers of the darkness of this world. Spiritual wickedness in high places. You know what I mean? And, and that's why we come to pray tonight. He said the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they're not fleshly, like you've seen in the video where he had the, the bombs, and that's really what they do, Pastor Nate, up in the mountains, that they'll shoot them, them grenades and them bombs to explode so that the snow will fall, and, and, and you know what I mean, and it will keep it from, from avalanching or, or, or falling on those that, get, that ski on it or walk on it or anything, you know what I mean, and that's what we do when we come and pray tonight. Some of you are here as a result of this kind of prayer. God saved your life because we've been praying as a church. You with me? 
<laughs> and he said, he said it, you know what I mean? That, well, you know what I mean? How many people, I was telling somebody today, do you know how many people, even through our little church, who we've ministered to and we've talked to brother and sister that have died out there in sin, that have left this church and went to live the way they wanted to live, thinking they could be a Christian and do whatever they want, and they have died. Amen. You with me? Amen. Pastor Ray said it the other night, the wages of sin is death. We read it yesterday. Amen. And he also read a scripture that said, you know what, know this day that your sin will surely find yeah. you out. And the soul that sins shall die. That's right. You with me? Amen. And it's like, you know, and, and, and you know what I mean? And that's what we do when we're here praying. We're trying to, we're praying that Satan would literally loose them people. We're commanding him to let them go. We're praying for that backslider to come in and be saved yes, and be delivered. And, and you know what we do when we get out there? And I was thinking today because I was walking all over the east side. And I was thinking just the other day for Easter, we went out and handed flyers. Do you know how many people came in as, as a result of that? Yes. We prayed and then we went to hand flyers. You know what? There was a lot of people that came as a result of that. That's right. Amen. You with me? Yes. And because of that. You know what I mean? Uh, 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 and I thought, you know what? We need to do that again. Amen. Yes. You with me? Yes. We need to do that again. We need yes. to make that our mission. Amen. Because how many people are out there, they're stuck in that snow. They're, they're piled under a mountain of sin. Amen. You with me? Amen. And we're out there probing in the name of Jesus. Who knows? One person came and said it was a result of that you had left a flyer on our door. It wasn't, we didn't even talk to him. But who knows, we're probing and we're saying Jesus touched these flyers and we're trying to reach them lives that are barely hanging on. You with me? That have nowhere else to go. And it's like, you know what, Jesus is that rescue team. We are that rescue team. We are them ones that go out into the into the into the cities and says who wants to be saved where are you at can you see can you see the kind of hypocrisy that is in the church to where we feel like the church is there to bless us right where we're there and well I, let me see if i like this church and we're checking out the air conditioning and, and the children's ministry and and and, and if it's pretty enough or well what side of town is it and what do the ushers look like you know what I mean and all this stuff and how it can benefit us is almost like if we're going to look for a resort or 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 or, 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 or uh, you know somewhere we want to go on vacation to feel good about ourselves right you with me Amen. 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 And you know what? Church was church is there to build you, to edify you, to, to, to build you up so you can go do the work of God out there in the, in the community, in your world. It's not about you. Right. It's not about entertainment and how, well, how, do they have a whole choir? Do they have a group? Do they have this and do they have that? No. Do they believe in Jesus? Amen. Is there power in that church? Do they fear the Lord in that church or are they just preaching whatever tickles the ears and whatever feels good to you? You with me? Whatever makes you feel like, you know, you walk out just your spirit lifted. When was this ever about us? You with me? It's not about us tonight. It's about us coming in like we're in a military and we come in here to get instructions from our commander in chief, from our pastor and say, Pastor, tell us what is the mission? What do we need to do? And not stand around and say, well, I don't know what to do. Figure your job out. Figure out what God has for you. How, Pastor? On your knees in prayer. Seeking the face of God. Asking God to speak to you. God, give me a vision. Show me where they're at, Lord God. He'll direct you to them souls that are lost in that snow in there. He'll do it. He's done it for me before. You with me? How did he do it? I was seeking his face. Praying and God directs me. How does he, how does he direct me and not you? You with me? It's not right. It's not true. God will speak to you if you're hungry for God. If you want God to use you, and I'm telling you in this last day, they said it last night on that video, you better get on fire for the Lord. None of this lukewarm stuff. And I know we got some lukewarmers in our church. You need to get your life on fire for God. 
You need to be one of those ones like pastors preaching now, preaching on a street corner, letting everybody know you better get right with God. For the time is short and Jesus is coming soon. You with me? Amen. That's your mission. That's why we pray. That's why we seek the Lord. So God will give us a word from him. You with me? Why are you looking at me like that tonight? Some of you are looking like, gee. Where's the one that's hungry? Where's the one that's saying, preach it, Pastor? Come on, Pastor. Give me that, what you have. I want what you have. I want the fire that's in your soul. I don't want to stand around drinking hot cocoa, looking off the deck on the on the ski resort and saying, oh, what a beautiful day. I think I'm going to go to the jacuzzi and then I'm going to go have fun and eat dinner and play games and do this. Isn't it time to stop that stuff? Isn't it time for you to get real with God, to get serious with God and begin to seek the Lord on your own time? Begin to fall in love with Jesus. Begin to worship him in your homes. Turn, turn your homes into little mini churches. And begin to reach out to your neighbors. And begin to push flyers among your neighbors. And say, you know what? Hey, we want to win you to Christ. Amen. You with me? How do we do that? How do we get a plan in prayer? When you pray, God will speak to your life. When you pray, God will give you a plan how to reach your high school for Amen. Jesus. Amen. God will show you how to pray for your husband. Amen. They must be saved, church. Amen. We've come to the place where we're just, oh well, whatever. Well, one day God will save them. He said this, today is the day of salvation. Amen. Now is the appointed time. You with me? Are you, is anybody getting something from this? You with me? Now is the time for you to seek the Lord. You with me? It doesn't matter how old you are here today. Amen? If you're, if you're the oldest one in our church or the youngest one in our church, I'm telling you God is looking for somebody that will just let him fill them. You with me? That will just open your heart up and say, God, Man, God, you, you ain't showing us this for nothing, God. What have you been speaking to us even in the last few days, God? I mean, it cannot go in one ear and out the other. You've got to get a mandate. You've got to get, you know what I mean, a desire to pray, to say, God, show me what to do. How did this man do it in his personal time, in prayer and in seeking of the Lord? You with me? Right. When God's people pray, man, I'm telling you what, there's power. Man. And I'm not, I'm telling you tonight, I know that there's a few of you that pray in this place. And some of you that come and stand around and watch. Amen. And I'm telling you what, listen, those of you that stand around and watch, you better get your lives in order with Amen. God. And you better learn to pray. Yes. You with me? Yeah. No more of this a, a spectator sport no more of this coming and jacking around at the church while everybody's praying yeah. you better get your life right with God yeah. there's kids out there today on the streets who wouldn't listen to what I'm saying today you with me yeah. and I'm telling you what God is not playing games anymore if there's ever been a time for you to say you know what God I need to get my life in order yeah. I do. Not my husband, not my children, not my wife, not my you know, friends at church, not my friends at school. I need to get my life right with you. It comes in that place of prayer. You with me? It comes in that place of prayer when you seek the Lord. That's what we've come. I don't know if some of you understand what you came into tonight. Yeah. Some of you might have thought you were coming into something cute, something nice, and you know, we're going to give you popsicles or something like that. But in this church, we pray. Amen. The other churches you might come from, you may have never prayed in your life. But in this church, we pray. Amen. And I'm telling you what, if you stick around here long enough, you're not going to be the same. Amen. God will change your life. And so enough of me speaking and enough of what we heard, it's time to pray. Amen. I want everybody on your feet tonight. Amen. I don't want to see any of the youth messing around tonight. Do you hear me, youth? Amen. Amen. Jesus. I want everybody on your feet tonight. Yes. This is serious. Nobody has you here tonight. You with me? Amen. Nobody has you here. If you're here because somebody made you come, you know what I mean? Uh, talk to one of the people in the back. Tell them you can take me home now. Come on, come on. 
You with me? Because this is voluntary tonight. We're here to pray. We're here to learn. You with me? We're here to seek the face of God. What God is doing is something supernatural and something, something mighty tonight. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You with me? I want you tonight to understand that. And I want you tonight to get involved in this. Some of you are looking at me. Some of you are yawning. Some of you are, are in a different place right now. Listen, I'm telling you tonight, before we start, you're free to go. Go home. Go home. If you don't want God to change your life, if you don't want God to do, if you're saying, wow, what in the world? Go home. Because when we step into this place, it's holy ground. It's holy ground. And if you don't want God to change you, you better leave. Because God wants to get a hold of you. You know why? Because he wants to save your family. And I'm telling you today, some of your family, including your mothers and fathers, your sons and daughters, your sisters and brothers, are on their way to hell tonight. And that ought to scare you tonight. That ought to put the fear of God in you to say, you know what? I need to pray. I need to pray because this ain't a game. This ain't coming over here to church to find some cute boy or some cute girl or a man or a woman or, or, or be entertained or, or anything like that. This is warfare here. Yeah. When you get into warfare, yeah. you need people around you yeah. that are warriors. People around you that are, that are ready to pray and seek the Lord. Not those who come. Could you imagine being out there in Iraq? And you're, you're out there and you're shooting and they're shooting at you. And somebody over here is just standing here like, wow. <laughs> And they're watching fire go by, and they're they're seeing you shooting, and they're like, and they're, and they're just watching you. Come on, come on. Listen, I'm telling you tonight, some of you better be careful. You're gonna get shot in the process yeah. if you don't get involved in this yeah. in, in what's going on, because the enemy's playing for keeps. Yes. The enemy's out to kill, steal, and destroy. Yes. You with me? Yeah. And tonight we're gonna we're gonna pray, and we're gonna seek the Lord, and we're gonna ask Him to save these family members yeah. that are lost tonight. Yeah. We're going to ask him to reach these people. Because you know what? How, how long are we going to continue to say, well, someday God's going to do it. One of these days, when we're praying, and maybe one of these days my child will come to the Lord. Why not today? Why not now? God is a great God, and God is able to move mountains. All you need is faith in God tonight. Let's pray tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, come on. I want every one of you praying tonight for your family. Pray tonight for your loved ones. Pray tonight for your enemies tonight. Pray tonight for our city tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for those who may be even watching on YouTube tonight. God, they're watching for a reason. They stumbled on this for a reason. Tonight, we pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, save that mother at home, Lord God. Oh, by her 
yourself in the hole, God. Oh, Father, tonight we pray for that one who, Father, is suicidal in the name of Jesus. And we pray and we bind the enemy of, of, of death off of you tonight. We bind that spirit of death off of you. And we, Father, loose the spirit of life on you. Do not take your own life. In the name of Jesus, be saved. Oh, my God, tonight. Oh, Father, tonight we pray, Lord God. Father, we seek, Father, to shake heaven and earth tonight. Humble yourself and God will 
will help you. God will receive you and bless you tonight. Oh, Father, we humble our hearts in your presence. Oh, my God, we pray tonight. We pray, God, with all our hearts, Father. We pray tonight with everything on the inside. We pray until something happens tonight, God. Oh, Father, Lord. Oh, Father, tonight we pray, God. And we seek your face, Lord. We seek your face, Lord. Father, we're not seeking your gifts. We're not seeking your hand of outstretched with blessings. Father, we're seeking you tonight. We're seeking your heart, God. We're seeking your character tonight. We're seeking you, Father, tonight. God, we need more of you, Lord. Too many times we've asked you for stuff and never, Lord God, just loved you for who you are, God. Father, we seek you tonight. Come on, church. Understand what we're saying tonight. Oh, my God, tonight. Seek him. Seek him tonight. Fall back in love with Jesus tonight. Oh, my God, tonight how far we've fallen, Lord. Oh, my God, we've left our first love, oh, God. We've forgotten what it is to love Jesus, Lord. But tonight we turn back to you, God. Tonight we turn back with repentance, Lord. Tonight we turn back to you, Lord, as a church for forgiveness of our sins, Lord. We turn back to you for our city. Forgive Pueblo of her sins, God. Forgive her of her drunkenness. Forgive her of her fornication, Lord. Forgive her of her adultery, Lord. Forgive her of her drug abuse, God. Forgive this city, Lord. Oh, Father, for her sins tonight, God. Oh, have mercy, my God. Have mercy. Have mercy on our city, Lord. Don't let the devil have his way in Pueblo. Save our youth, God. Save our children, Lord. Save our city, God. Save Pueblo tonight, Father. Our young people, Lord, are dying, Lord. They're getting addicted to, to pills, oh God. To drugs, to heroin, oh God. Father, alcohol, Lord God. Oxycontins, God. My God, save them. Don't let the devil pull them into that darkness. In the name of Jesus, we pull you out of the darkness. We pull you out, devil. Loose them kids. Let them go tonight. Loose them, devil. You have no right. By the authority of Jesus Christ, we pull our kids out of darkness. Come on, parents. You have no right there. In the name of Jesus. God, we take authority over every foul spirit. We take authority over the devil tonight. Over the strong men in our city. Strong men in the name of Jesus. We might be powerless in ourselves. Our names mean nothing to you. But tonight, strong men, we come before you in the name of Jesus. We take authority and we bind you. We bind you. We arrest you tonight. In the name of Jesus, we render you helpless tonight. And we cast you out of our city. In the name of Jesus, never to return again. Father, you said in your word, whatsoever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And Father, whatsoever we loose, we set free on earth, shall be loosed and set free in heaven as well. Oh God, tonight we use the Holy Ghost on Pueblo. We use the Holy Ghost on Pueblo. I said we loose the Holy Ghost on Pueblo. You Holy Spirit on our city tonight. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, come and convict this city of sin. Convict them of righteousness and convict them of judgment, Father. 
Oh my God, tonight in the name of Jesus. Oh Father, we lose a spirit of repentance over Pueblo, God. In the name of Jesus, starting from the pulpit, all the way, Father, to the pew in the back, God. In the name of Jesus, Father. Oh my God, tonight we pray for our city. We bless our city tonight. I said we bless our city tonight. Somebody bless your city. For as it prospers, so do you prosper. Jesus! Jesus! We seek your face, God. Hallelujah. We seek your face for revival in our city, God. Oh, my God, in the name of Jesus. Fourth part to that prayer, Lord God. You said if we humble ourselves, two, if we pray. you. The Holy Ghost convicts you tonight of that very thing. Why, Pastor? So that you can be free. So that you can be holy even as God is holy tonight. Oh my God, tonight we turn from our wicked ways. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, church. Them thoughts, them attitudes, them complaints, them murmurs against those in your own household, against those your own parents, against your boss. You're now talking about your boss with the rest of the workers. Come on, church. Those of you who went and talked against your pastors and your leaders, the Lord deal with you tonight. Repent of your sin. Turn to God with all your heart tonight. Every one of you children, every one of you youth that have sinned against your parents, you've snuck out of your room, you're on Facebook doing stuff that is totally ungodly. You're a bully. You're making fun of people. You're hurting them. You're hurting their feelings and you don't care. Tonight I pray that you would repent. You're smoking dope, smoking cigarettes, you're drinking the night. You think nobody knows, but God sees everything tonight. You're out fooling around with your girlfriend and boyfriend and you've gone too far. Tonight, repent of your sin tonight. God is faithful. God will forgive you if you confess your sin. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He said, turn from your wicked ways. He said, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive your sins. And he said, and I will heal your family. I will heal your marriage. I will heal your children. I will heal your home, your finances. I will heal your health. Oh, Father, Lord, tonight, hear from heaven, my God. Hear from heaven, Lord. Hear from heaven, oh God. Hear us, oh God. Somebody ask him. Somebody beg him. God, hear our prayer, Lord. Don't let him go unanswered. Don't let him fall on deaf ears, my God. Hear our prayer tonight in this church. Oh, Troy, God. 
Hear us, oh God, and send revival. Send revival. Send revival. Send revival, Lord. Send revival, Lord. Send revival to our souls. Send revival, Lord. Send revival to this place. Send revival to every pope, Lord God, that's willing to hear. Send revival to every pastor and every preacher still under the conviction of God. Send revival, Lord, to everyone in their homes, Lord. Father, Lord God, who have made excuses why they can't plug into a church. Send revival, Lord, to their hearts. Convict them, oh God. Convict them to be a part. Convict them to get involved. Convict them, Lord, to be addicted to the ministry of Jesus Christ. Oh, my God, tonight. My God, tonight, Lord. Shola Ramasando Revocoriama. Gloria Ramasiko Revocoriama. Oh, my God, my God, my God. My God tonight, Lord. My God, hallelujah, Lord. Oh, God. How our youth needs you, Father. How our young people, Lord, have been deceived by the enemy, Lord. Father, even our young men, Lord, still act like they're 10 or 11, God. Oh, my God, you said in the word, when I was a child, I thought as a child, I acted like a child, I behaved as a child. But when I became a man, Lord God, I put away childish things. Oh, Father, I pray tonight, God, you would deal with every young man. You would deal with every young husband, Lord. You would deal with every young teenager, boy. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, to put away childish things, Lord. To put away those video games, Lord. And take up their Bibles, Lord. Take up their tracks, Lord God. Take up the mandate. Take up their cross. And follow you, Jesus. Oh, my God, send the Holy Ghost. Oh, Father, in the lives of our young men, oh God. Oh, Jesus, tonight, Lord. Oh, my God. Oh, Father, Lord God, save our youth, God. Save our youth, Lord. Come on, ask God to save our young people. Save them teenagers, especially those. Especially those that are from the church. God, save them tonight, Lord. Maybe some of you are here tonight and your teenager ain't saved. Pray for them tonight. Pray you're their only hope. You're their only hope tonight. You're their only hope for God tonight. Even if they're rebelling, even if they say they, they hate your God and don't want nothing to do with them, pray more for their soul. Don't you listen to the voice coming out of their mouth. For their demonic influence tonight. They have a demonic influence over them. But you have authority over demons. The Bible says cast them out in Jesus' name. Take authority tonight, parents. Take authority over that young person tonight. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, for those, Lord God, involved in the foster care, in those, Father, tonight, Lord, without their parents, oh God, tossed here and there, we pray tonight, Father. We pray for those who you would consider orphans, God. Oh, Father, caught up in the system, Lord. Oh, my God, that you would have mercy on them, Lord. Oh, God, that you would save them, Lord. God, send them here and we'll care for them, God. Send them here, oh God. We'll love them, Lord. We'll teach them, Lord. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Oh, Father, tonight, God. Help us, Lord. Help us reach them, Lord. Help us pray, Lord. Give us strategies, Lord, on how to reach these young people, on how to reach this generation, oh God. Give us dreams, God. Give us visions, Lord, like you did Steve Hill. Father, the right weapons, Lord, the right tools, Lord, to reach 
teach these young people, Lord God. Father, your word says that greater is he that is on the inside of us than he that is in this world. And the devil's got strategies, Lord. He's got strategies against our teens. And Father, it appears that he's winning. But Father, I thank you that you're greater than him. I thank you that Satan has been defeated. Satan, every wicked, foul spirit of darkness tonight, hear us well. In the name of Jesus, you come to us with a spirit and sword. You come to us with weaponry and things of the flesh. But we come to you tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we command you, loose this generation. Loose this generation. Loose this generation in the name of Jesus. Loose them and let them go. Come on, parents. Tell the devil, loose my son. Loose my daughter. Come on, pray for those you may not even know tonight. The friends of your children, the neighborhood kids. Tell the devil, loose them and let them go tonight. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We pray for a youth revival, my God. We pray for a youth revival that's not made by hands of men, that's not formed by an organization, Lord. Oh, my God, but that is the work of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Ghost, have your way in Pueblo tonight. Holy Spirit, save them teens running our neighborhood. Save them, Lord God. Them kids that come play basketball over here. Save them, Lord God. Them kids that skate by or ride their bikes by. Father, those that come around tagging up our neighborhood, save them, my God, like you saved us, Lord. Save them, oh God. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, oh my God, we pray, Father, for the harvest. We pray for our harvest tonight, God. The Lord of the harvest, send forth labors into your harvest field tonight, Lord. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Oh, God. Oh, God, the Lord said to Isaiah, Whom shall I send, and who will go for me? And Isaiah said, Lord, here am I. Send me, God. Where's the mother? Where's the woman? Where's the man? Where's the teen young man that would say, Lord, I see the vision. I hear the call. I can hear the cries of the hurting people. Lord, here am I. Here am I, here am I Lord God. Send me, Lord. Send me, Father. They're out there, church. They're out there under that, that snow. They're out there under that weight of sin. Young women, young ladies, young mothers out there under the weight of conviction, under the weight of, of their sinfulness, hurt by every man that comes by, laden with, with lusts and with sin. They're looking for a Savior. They're looking for someone to help them tonight. Where is that woman that would say, God, here am I. Here am I, Lord. I don't want to just come to church. I want to be the church. I want to be the one, Lord, to win the souls. I want to be wise, Lord, that I might win that soul winner's crown. That I might win, Father, those to Christ who are out there under that weight of sin tonight, God. I want to loose them. I want to let them go from the kingdom of darkness and turn them to the kingdom of our God in Christ. Oh, my God, tonight. Oh my God, raise up a church, raise up a people, Lord God, that will once and for all forget about their own dreams, forget about their own lives, forget about their own hopes, 
forget about their own traditions, God, yeah. and we'll lose it all to come after your vision, God, yeah. to come after your kingdom, oh God, and to seek and save the lost and dying, yeah. God. Lord. Oh, Father. Yeah, Lord. Here am I, oh God. Oh, here am I, Lord God. Here save Lord. me tonight. Oh, Father, do a work. Do a work tonight, God. Come on, do a work in me. the people that are in this church tonight. God, touch their hearts, Father. Convict them, oh God, tonight unto righteousness, unto holiness, unto the fear of the Lord, my God. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Father. Oh, Father, we pray. start a fire in you. Let me tell you something tonight. You ain't going to win nobody to Christ. You ain't going to win one soul to Christ if you don't have the fire of God on the inside of you. Revival always starts with you. Your family will be saved because of you. Let God light you on fire tonight. Beg Him, ask Him, plead with Him. Wrestle with Him tonight. God, I will not you go until you bless me tonight. Light a fire on the inside of me. Tired of being lukewarm, Lord. I'm tired of being status quo Christianity, Lord. I don't want to be like the rest. I don't want to look like them, Lord. I want to be like Jesus, Lord. I want to be on fire for you, God. I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on, tell him that tonight. I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on, ask him tonight. Tell him again. I want the Holy Ghost, Lord. He said, ask and it will be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it will be opened unto you. Keep seeking. Keep asking. Keep knocking. Don't stop. Don't quit. Don't get tired. I want more, Lord. If I'm going to change my family, if I'm going to change my community, if I'm going to change this city for God, if I'm going to make a difference in this nation, if I'm going to be a world shaker and a history maker, Father, I need the Holy Ghost. I can't do it by myself. I tried, Lord. I can, Lord. I need your help, Lord. Holy Spirit, fall afresh. Holy Spirit, fall afresh. Come on, you've got to ask Him. You've got to plead with Him. That word ask, look it up. It literally means to beg God. Pastor Ray taught you how to be spiritual beggars. Where are you at tonight? How much do you want of God? Go after it then tonight. Go after it then tonight. He said, you'll search for me, you'll seek me, and you'll find me when you search for me with all your heart. Can you, can you honestly say that's all your heart tonight? Pastor pours out all his heart on this pulpit. Pastor pours out everything to you tonight. Jesus has poured everything out for you on a cross. That ain't all you got. When you're ready, when you give him all, he'll come. God desires to fill you. 
God desires to empower you, but you got to want him more than you want life itself. you got to want him more than you want that raise. you got to want God more than you want a husband. you got to want God more than you want children. you got to want him with all your heart and soul. And when you want him that bad, then you'll find him. Yes, Lord. Come on, rend your hearts tonight. Rend your hearts tonight in His presence. Come on, we didn't come to play church. We didn't come to play prayer tonight. We come to tear our hearts in His presence and ask Him, God, come and fill us. Come, Lord, do a work in our life. Do a work in us. Do a work through us. Do a work for us, my God. Do a work, my Lord. Do a work. Oh, my God, tonight. Give us a vision, Lord. Yes, Lord. Give us a vision, God. Give us a vision, my Lord. Give us a vision, Lord. Father, don't let that young lady have that abortion, Lord. Yes, Lord. Don't let her have that abortion, Father. Stop that abortion in this city, God. Stop that spirit, that after, day after pill, whatever it is, God. Father, we cannot hide our sins, oh God. Father, Lord, I pray that things won't work, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father. Don't let the things this world invents cover up sin, God. Father, you told us to reprove it, to expose it, oh God, to bring it into light, oh God. If we're not sinning, we have no reason for the next day pill, oh God. Or for no penicillin, oh God. Father, rid us tonight. Father, no more babies dying in Pueblo, oh God. No more babies dying as a result, Lord, of our sexual sin and immorality, God. Deal with our hearts tonight. Deal with our hearts. I see tonight the baby's bones in their flesh and their bodies tore up in a pile tonight because of the sins of men and the sins of women trying to hide their sin tonight. God, forgive tonight that parent, that mother who did not know any better, oh God. Forgive, Lord, that young man in his folly thinking he was cool and tough, oh God. Father, Lord God, trying to hide their sin, Father, so that their future might not be affected. God, have mercy. Bring them into, bring them into your love. Bring them into your forgiveness. Save them from that sin, Lord. Heal them. Deliver them from that evil, Lord God. Oh, Father, you saved us from our sin. You came for it. But you said to us, go and sin no more. Oh, Father, never again, Lord. Never again, Lord God. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, my God. I wish some of you tonight would forget about what time it is. I wish some of you would pray and get your mind off your phone. Get your mind off your own problems. I wish tonight some of you would tap into the Spirit of God and see what I see tonight. This is not a game. This is life and death. This is heaven and hell. Oh my God, tonight, forgive us for our lukewarm spirit, oh God. Forgive us, Lord, for being neither hot nor cold. Forgive the church, Lord God, tonight. Father, convict our hearts, Lord. Father, Lord, let us wash ourselves in that precious blood. Oh, Father, let us come to you with broken hearts, Lord. Let us come to you with humble hearts, Lord. Let us hear, Lord, your, your voice. You said, my sheep hear my voice, and the voice of a stranger they will not follow. Oh, Father, tonight, hear our prayers, God. Save us, Lord God, from this lukewarm spirit, oh God, that infiltrates the church tonight. Save us, oh God. Oh, my God, tonight. Oh, my God, tonight. Come on, he don't read your mind tonight. 
Come on, pray out loud. You don't read your mind tonight. You got to get up from your knees and pray and do it. But don't sit there falling asleep and being silent. Tonight's a night to pray tonight. Souls are at stake. Souls are at stake tonight. Oh, Father. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Cry out to God tonight. Cry out to Him for forgiveness. Cry out to Him for help. Cry out to Him, daughters of Zion. Weep tonight for your children. Weep tonight for the sons of, of God tonight. Weep tonight for the church. In the name of Jesus, weep for your fathers and mothers. Weep for your brothers and sisters. Feel what you feel, oh God. Oh God, tonight our families are in trouble, Lord. Marriages, Christian marriages, and living lies, Lord God. It's secrets, Father. Oh Father, Lord God, have mercy, oh God. Save, Lord. Deliver. Heal, Father. 